himself and hear his heart. One thing that I've really admired about Dan is that he's been able to figure out a way to navigate this world, this world of adoption that's been declining, and Nightlight's figured out a way to grow during that time. And that's just really amazing to see that. And he's also been able to navigate the increasingly challenging part of our culture that can, can, can be a bit hostile uh, toward the Christian faith at times. And so I would love for you to meet Dan now. We've, we found them to be creative and innovative, and we're super excited. Uh, I know sometimes people go, but what do you really think? You know, because that's what we tend to do. We really think it's good. It's like a breath of fresh air. It is super exciting to have a weekly team meeting on the phone with people with more experience. This last week we had a baby born with special needs uh, and we weren't sure if we were going to have a family for that baby. And Nightlight said, we've never had a baby with any kind of special needs, even a baby with an outlook of it being terminal. With, that we haven't been able to find a family for. So we're like, yes, that's another time when we can say yes and not have to say no. So I'd like y'all to give it up now for Dan Nurboss. So. Well, I hope you know that Generations Adoptions is known throughout the national adoption community for this gala, and can you see why? Isn't this one of the best events you're likely to attend for a nonprofit this year? This is awesome. What a privilege to be here, to have met many of you. And I wanna tell you just a little bit about why we need Generations, why Generations needs Nightlight, and why we need you as well. About a year ago, my wife and I went to the nation of Kyrgyzstan in Central Asia, and we spent 10 days there one of the children we met was named Vector, and he's six years old, and after spending 10 days, my wife developed a strong fondness for this boy, and she grabbed him by the face as we were leaving, and she repeated the words of John 14, 18, which hang over our mantle. She said, I will not leave you as an orphan. And for the next few months, we worked hard to find a family for this child, and we did. For the last 12 years, Generations has been doing that, not leaving children as orphans. And that's why we need generations, because of the faithfulness to that very task, echoing the words of Jesus. I called one of our donors a few years ago, his name is Paul, and he gives regularly toward adoption scholarships. So I wanted to phone him and thank him for his continuous gifts. And he stopped me before I was even able to finish my sentence. And he said, Dan, I owe Nightlight a debt that I'll never be able to repay because you've given me my grandkids. There are hundreds of people here tonight because Generations has done that for you, right? They've given you a family. It says in Psalm 113.9 that God settles the childless woman in her home as the happy mother of children. And Generations has been doing that for 12 years as well. About a year ago, my wife and I adopted a six-year-old girl named Idana, and she only spoke Russian. She came into our home in her first few weeks, and my father was having dinner with us, and again, she, she said this in Russian, but I'll say, what it, say it in English. She said, Grandpa, you sit here. Sonny, you sit here. Mom, you sit here. Okay, everybody, it's time to pray. And this was just about a week in our home. And my dad said, I see she's gone from orphan to her majesty in just a couple weeks. <laughs> this is why Generations needs Nightlight, because Nightlight has, as Kathy mentioned, has the ability to add to the programs that Generations is already doing. We've all, Generations has already been settling families as the parents of children and not leaving children as orphans, but we're able to extend the reach to 15 additional countries, and also with our Snowflake program. We put out the request to dozens of agencies a few years ago to partner in our embryo adoption program, and do you know that only one agency has ever done any decent amount of work getting pre-born human beings frozen as embryos 
adopted by families, and that's generations. They have been our most successful partner in advocating for the life of these unborn children and getting frozen embryos placed in adoptive families. God is doing something amazing with that embryo adoption program because there are embryos that some people view as trash. There was a set of embryos, two embryos, both considered low quality and unlikely to survive. We had an adoptive family say they wanted them. The doctor said, don't do it. These embryos will never survive. Let us get you good embryos. This family implanted two embryos, and what do you think happened? They had three children. <laughs> they had one of the embryos split into twins, and the other embryo was viable, and they had three kids. So God is doing something amazing, and has been with the partnership with Generations to get embryos adopted as well. Lastly, I want to explain why we need you. You know, people, if you're helping in a pro-life organization, people just assume you're Christian. But that's kind of sad, isn't it? Because you don't have to be Christian to be pro-life. Well, it's the same thing in adoption. People assume that if you are working in the field of adoption, especially in our country adoption or embryo adoption, they assume that you're Christian. And one of the attorneys who works for us explained very clearly why. Because there's no money in it. And that's true. There's really, it's very difficult for adoption agencies to survive, as Kathy was saying. 70% of the uh, cost of an adoption is paid for by the fees from the family. And the other 30% is subsidized by people like you tonight at events like this. And so we depend upon fundraising in order to keep the cost of adoption affordable in order to get more kids adopted. So what we need from you is expressed in Hosea 14.3 where it says, in you the fatherless have compassion. Now that's said about God, in God the fatherless have compassion. But I hope that each of you will share the heart of God and have compassion. And that can mean any number of things for you. Not everyone here is called to adopt but everyone is called to plead the case of the birth mother and the orphan. Thanks, and God bless.